Ooh, take a look at this gun and this rock. Don't shoot against hard surfaces because the bullet can ricochet. Don't shoot against hard surfaces because the bullet can ricochet. Did you understand what I just said? Be honest. Did you understand me? Well, this lesson is about English listening. English listening. Are you a good English listener? Listening is so important. You know, I had a student once who, well, let's just say his listening sucked. His listening was really bad. His speaking was pretty good and his reading was good. His writing was pretty good, but his listening was terrible. We had so many miscommunications because his listening skills were so bad. But the problem was that he thought he was a good listener. He thought he was good. His confidence was very high, right? But, but he just, he sucked, right? We had a lot of miscommunications. So it's better not to understand someone than to think you understand them. Okay. It's better to not understand someone than to think you understand them. Do you understand this? So if you can't understand English, uh, that's okay. And that's better than if you think you can understand them, but you don't really understand them, right? Like my student, his confidence was really high but his skill was really low. <laughs> so this is bad. Really, your confidence should be high and your skill should be high. Your confidence and your skill should be about the same level. If your confidence is really high and your skill is really low, you're going to get into some very awkward situations. It's going to be awkward for native English speakers. Every time I talked with him, it was awkward. You know, he thought he knew what I was saying, but you know, it was just terrible. I was talking like I wanted the conversation to go this way, but he heard me say something and then he thought I was saying something else. So every time I always had to say, Hey, wait, wait, you misunderstood me. You misunderstood me. Okay. So that was awkward. Okay. So this is what I said. Don't shoot against hard surfaces because the bullet can ricochet. Okay. A rock is a hard surface and the word ricochet means to bounce, bounce. Okay. If you shoot against like a rock, the bullet might bounce back and hit you, right? Or it might ricochet somewhere else, right? That's what ricochet means. Okay. Now I'm going to read you a few sentences. Okay. And I want you to, to listen to me and try to figure out what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm going to read you the sentences off my phone. Are you ready? Okay. Listen, I like watching Rick Crochet. I like watching Rick Crochet. What did I say? Well, I said this, I said, I like watching Rick crochet. Okay. Look, this guy's name is Rick and he is crocheting, crocheting. Did you know that? Did you know that this is called crocheting? Now there's another thing called knitting, uh, which is the same. I think it's the same. It, it's a little bit different. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest. Do you know what the difference is between knitting and crocheting? I don't know. Maybe if you're a woman, you know, because a lot of women love crocheting like uh, hats or, you know, mittens or socks or something. I don't know any men who crochet or knit. Hey, if you're a man and you know how to knit or crochet, let me know down there in the comments because you'll be the first man I know who knows how to crochet or knit. That's great. Okay. So let me read another sentence and you listen 
and try to think about what I'm saying. Try to understand what I'm saying, okay? Does this hat belong to Rick or Shane? Does this hat belong to Rick or Shane? Did you hear what I said? I said, does this hat belong to Rick or Shane? Okay, so that guy's name's Rick. That guy's name is Shane. Does this hat belong to Rick or Shane? Did you get that? Did you hear it? Okay, now listen to this next one. I don't like the Rico's shape. I don't like the Rico's shape. What did I say? I said, I don't like the Rico's shape. Okay, a R- Rico is the name of a camera brand. It's not a very popular brand, but um, you know, people who like photography, like me, know about this this camera. Okay, it's called a Rico. Rico. Now, um, maybe you don't like the shape of the camera. Okay, then you could say, I don't like the Rico's shape. I don't like the shape of the camera. Okay, so listen to the next one. Ready? Don't touch Rick's cache. Eh? Don't touch Rick's cache. Eh? What did I say? I said, don't touch Rick's cash, eh? So this guy is Rick, and he has some cash, right? Just on the table. And, you know, I could say, don't touch Rick's cash, eh? He might get mad. He might get mad if you if you touch his money, right? Okay, so look at these words here, right? Ricochet. Rick Crochet, Rick or Shane, Rico's Shape, Rick's Cache. Eh? Can you hear the difference between these? Can you hear the difference between the sounds? There is a little bit of a difference. Okay, I can hear the difference. Can you hear the difference? Now, you might not be able to hear the difference, and this might make you worried. Oh no, my English listening is terrible. Don't worry, I want to tell you a secret, okay? You don't need to hear every sound to have good English listening skills. You don't need to hear every sound in a word to have good English listening skills. Maybe that's what you think. I need to hear every sound. That's not true, you don't have to, okay? Um, Listening means understanding, right? What is listening? The reason you want good listening skills is so that you can understand, right? That's the only reason you want good listening. So if you can understand everything, that means you have good listening. So it doesn't matter if you hear all the individual sounds or not, okay? Listen to this example, okay? I'm going to say a sentence and I want you to to listen to me, all right? I love flying like a ver. Did you hear me? What did I say? I'll say it again. I love flying like a ver. What did I say? I said, I love flying like a... What word was this? Did you hear this word? Maybe you didn't hear it. Why didn't you hear it? Well, because the word was muffled. It was muffled. I like flying like a... What did I say? You you didn't hear me, okay? Muffled means when you talk like this, right? If I'm talking like this, it's muffled. That's muffled. (laughs) That's muffled. My voice is muffled. It means it's it's hard to... It's hard to understand. It's sort of quiet and muffled. Muffled. That's called muffled, okay? But you still understood the sentence, right? What word is this? Bird. I love flying like a bird. Actually, I said verb. <laughs> verb. But you understood me to be to be ver to be bird, right? Not verb. You understood this word to be bird. Why? Because of the context. Okay, the context. You could see me flapping my wings, right? I love flying and when you, you saw me go like this, you automatically thought of the words fly and bird, right? You thought about those. So that was, that's the context. That's why you, you knew 
the word was bird, right? Even though you couldn't hear it, even though it was muffled, bird, 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 <laughs> bird, right? So I want to give you a tip, okay? Uh, and my tip is practice predicting possibilities. Practice predicting possibilities. Now, I just made this up for you, especially for you, right? Three Ps, so it's easy to remember. Practice predicting possibilities. What does this mean? Well, this means that you can practice uh, making a prediction on what words are going to be in a certain context. Okay, in, what, in a situation, what words might appear there. So think about that. You can actually practice this. And I think this will really help you improve your listening skills if you try predicting possibilities. Okay, let's say uh, you hear somebody talking about a gun, right? About a gun. So then uh, try to think about the words that they might use in that conversation. Okay, so let's think, what are some words that, that might appear in this conversation if someone is talking about a gun? What do you think? What are some possibilities? Let's try predicting some possibilities. Well, here are some, I think, you know, that could appear, right? Bullet. This is a bullet. Target. This here is a target. Trigger. Okay, that's the trigger. You pull the trigger to shoot the gun. Okay, ricochet. Now this word might appear. Ricochet, right? If you shoot against like a rock or something, the bullet might ricochet. Okay, so these words might appear in the conversation. So we already know what might happen because we're talking about a gun. Just like you saw me flapping my wings, you, you could predict that maybe the word bird would be there and maybe the word fly and both those words were there right so in this conversation we might see these words now we might not but there's a pretty high chance right there's a high probability right so when we are trying to predict possibilities i mean anything is possible right any word is possible but some words are more likely than other words right so these words are pretty likely they could happen. Okay, let's take a look at this. So this is a ping pong table. Let's say you are playing ping pong with your friend. What words might your friend say? You know, what vocabulary might appear in this situation? Well, let's see, maybe the word net. Okay, that's the net. Table, this is the ping pong table. Paddle, okay. That is the paddle. Ricochet. Yeah, you might hear this word in this context. I think in this situation, it would be more common to hear the word bounce, right? The ping pong ball is bouncing, but it's possible that you might hear the word ricochet as well. Okay, uh, now let's say you are listening to two women talk about crocheting. Okay, you might hear the word needle. Okay, those, those things are called needles. When you knit or when you crochet, you use those two sticks called needles. Okay, uh, you might hear the word yarn. Okay, this string is called yarn. Um, you might hear the word mittens. Okay, these are mittens. Right? Now, do you think you're going to hear the word ricochet in this conversation? I don't think so. I don't think the word ricochet is very likely here because there's nothing bouncing, right? So if you hear the word crochet, Rick crochet, right? You, you probably, it, it won't be this. It will probably be Rick, the guy's name, Rick crocheting, Rick crocheting, right? So this is not likely. So when we are in a situation, there are some words that will probably happen and there's some words that will probably not appear. So this is a word that won't appear in this situation. So we can we can predict that, right? We can predict which words are possible 
and which words are probably not possible in this situation. Okay, so look at this. Ricochet, Rick Crochet, Rick or Shane, Rico's Shape, Rick's Cache. Now, each of these contexts are different, right? They're very different, each of these situations. So even though the words sound very similar, uh, you don't need to worry because the meaning will be clear in the situation, in the context, right? So look at this, right? I mean, let's say you're at someone's house and someone says, does this hat belong to Rick or Shane? Okay, let's say you hear ricochet, ricochet, but you know it's not going to be this word because in the context, there are two people named Rick and Shane, right? So you already know that it's going to be this. So we can, we can just take this word out. So if you're in this situation, you can predict that Rick and Shane, you know, those words are going to appear in the, in the situation, but this word's not. So even if you hear this word, it doesn't have a place, right? So, so it's not going to be this word. Do you understand this? I hope it's clear for you, okay? So when you learn a vocabulary word, think about the possible situations in which you could use that word, okay? When you learn a vocabulary word, try to predict uh, which situations you might hear that word in and, and when you could use that word, okay? When I teach vocabulary on my channel here, you might notice something. I never just teach you the word. I always try to create some context, right? I start my videos and I try to create a context and then I teach you the vocabulary because then it's so much easier, right? Then if you already know the context, then the words fit nicely into the context. You don't have to think about the meaning too much. The meaning becomes clear in the context, right? Now, another thing I want to tell you is that you should feel the conversation. Try to, try to feel it. Don't just use your ears. Okay, English listening is more than just using your ears. Okay, it's about feeling the situation, feeling the context, okay? So don't just listen to individual sounds and, oh, what's that sound? Hmm. Okay, now the reason you can't do that is because the sound changes in words, okay? You can't just learn the pronunciation of a word um, and then hope that you will always hear that same pronunciation. You know, everybody has different pronunciation. And also, the words affect each other, affect the sound of each other, okay? So there's a word, there's a word, and there's a word. This word might be affected by that word and that word. Okay, so it might sound, if we just have this word by itself, it might sound one way, but when we add other words around it, the sound of the word might change a little bit. Okay, for example, take a look at this. I like Kate's socks. Okay, if I say this when I'm, you know, speaking normally, I would say, I like Kate's socks. I like Kate's socks. Okay, it sounds like I like Kate's socks. I like Kate's socks. I like Kate's socks. So, so these sort of go together. Okay, see there? There are two K's, right? I like Kate's socks. I like Kate's, but I don't say both K's because it's too hard. I only say one K. I like Kate. I like Kate's socks. And here again, here are two S's. Okay, there are two S's, but it's too hard to say both S's. So I just say one S. Okay, I like Kate's socks. I like Kate's socks. So if you are a, a beginner student, you might not hear this. You might hear this. I like eight socks. I like eight socks. Because that K disappeared, right? I like, then that one's gone, and this S is gone. This S is gone. So then we're just left with the word eight. I like eight socks. 
I like eight socks. So you might hear that and think, I like eight socks. Eight. Hmm. Eat. I like eating socks. I like eating socks. Right? That's what you might hear. Okay? So that's obviously wrong. You need to, you know, learn from the context. You're not talking about eating. You're talking about a girl's socks. I like Kate's socks. Okay. Now, there is a game in English called Mad Gab. Have you ever heard of this game? It's a fun game. Now, this game could be useful to you if you want to improve your English listening. Just, just the sounds. Okay? So, if you just want to improve just your listening to the sounds, this game might be fun. Okay? I'll give you an example. So, this game has phrases of gibberish. Gibberish means nonsense. Okay? It, it, it doesn't make sense. So, look at this phrase. Heine, duck, hiss. Heine, duck, hiss. These words don't make sense together. Okay? But there's a hidden phrase in here. There's a hidden English phrase. And to, to understand the phrase, you have to say this very fast. Okay? Heine, duck, hiss. Heine, duck, hiss. Heine, duck, kiss. Heine, duck, kiss. Can you hear what the hidden phrase is? It's, I need a kiss. I need a kiss. I need a kiss. Okay, that's, that's what it is. So, it's sort of a fun game. Um, and it's, it's hard because sometimes you're looking at the words, I need a kiss. I need a kiss. And you can't figure it out. So, even though your ears are hearing the same thing, it's very hard because there's no context. There's no context. You're just reading the words on the page. You see the word duck and your mind starts thinking of ducks, right? So, it's, this is so important. Context is, you know, most of English understanding, right? So, that's why I'm saying this is, this is so important. It's not just the individual sounds. Okay? It's not just the sounds. You need to practice predicting possibilities. You need to practice predicting. You know, when you have a real conversation, the conversation moves around. You don't just talk about one thing, right? Maybe you start talking about guns. Then the conversation moves to traveling. And then maybe you start talking about music and sports. Okay? In real life, conversations sort of go like this all over the place, right? So, try to predict what is going to come next in a conversation. Which words, which, which vocabulary words. So, if you're talking about guns and then you start talking about sports, then your mind should start thinking about, okay, what, which vocabulary will I hear? With sports, okay? We're not talking about guns anymore, now sports. And then now music. So, that's how native English speakers listen. We're always predicting what words we could hear. Then, suddenly, if we don't hear a word that, that fits in that context, we might say, hmm, what did you just say? Right? But if it's a word that's very similar, then we just, we assume the meaning, right? Like ricochet. Ricochet or Rick or Shane, right? Or Rick crochet, right? All those sound really, really similar, but we can predict it because of the context. Okay. So, hey, if you like getting tips like this, I would be so happy if you subscribe to my channel right down there. I'm hoping to make more listing videos in the future. And hey, I just want to say thank you to everyone who always likes my videos. So many people like my videos all the time. And it makes me really happy. So, thank you so much for doing that. Hey, let's do some homework. Let's say the conversation is about India. Okay, we're talking about India. Now, what words do you think could appear? Which vocabulary could appear in this conversation? Well, I can think of one word. Rickshaw. Okay, if you go to India, uh, there are a lot of rickshaws. You might travel by rickshaw. Okay, so this is a possible word in the conversation if we're talking about India. Now, if we're talking about Canada, 
it's probably not a word. So if, if me and you are talking about Canada, I wouldn't predict this word to be in the conversation. But if we are talking about India, I would predict this word as a possibility. Okay, so remember my tip, the three Ps. Predict possibilities. No, what was it? I forgot. I just made it up before this lesson. Okay, let me go back and see. What was it? Oh, practice predicting possibilities. Practice predicting possibilities. Okay, hey, let me know what words you think you would uh, you would think of if you uh, if we're talking about India let me know down there in the comments and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV take care